Hello Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games and today we're introducing a brand new video series here on Fearless Games. It's going to be a painting series. Uh, we're going to be sitting down and painting models for your entertainment. And unlike some of the other painting tutorials that I've done in the past, this is going to be one where it's all raw. From start to finish, you see the whole model being painted. No fancy cuts, no sped up footage, no fancy editing or voiceovers, just us painting the model step by step until it is finished, over maybe one episode or multiple episodes, depending on the project and how long it takes us. Each episode will be 30 minutes long, and as I mentioned, it'll be tutorialized as we do it. It'll be, we'll be talking about what we're doing, how we're doing it, what paints we're using, what brushes and such. Depending on who's doing the video will depend on how detailed it gets, and during the between each steps as we're painting, you'll get some colorful commentary from all of us, and it'll be random depending on the day, what's going on, and how we and what we feel like talking about. And so, like I said, different models each time. Um, so Warhammer, Fantasy, um, Infinity, um, War Machine, um, Dystopian Wars, whatever models that we feel like painting that day. And I can't speak for the rest of the fearless, but I know that in some of my videos, I may be asking you guys to vote on which models I should paint. Because as you can see, I got a whole bunch of models here that still need painting, and I can never decide which model to paint first. But this time, I have picked a model for our very first episode here. So today, we're going to be painting a model of a character that I despise amongst all, I will stop whatever I'm doing to make sure I can bring him to justice, just like any loyal Dark Angel would. So join me as I paint Cypher, the Fallen Angel, on here, episode one of The Joy of Painting, Minis. Okay, so we're going to begin here. So I have the model, and as you can see, it has been painted a little bit. It has been base coat, um, primed, essentially. And what I used for priming is I used Vallejo Model Air um, Black. And so for this video, we'll be using the following paints that um, there should be displayed on the screen right now in text. And... Before I begin, also, I'm going to say and a lot, is I do apologize ahead of time if I end up accidentally covering the model or something that I'm painting. Um, I very rarely do these types of things, so hopefully as these episodes and these videos go on, I'll get better at that. So, let's go and dive into our very first thing, which is going to be base coating the model in the prime color. Well, not base coating per se, but we're just going to paint up all the areas for this. So what I'm going to be doing for this, um, the model is I'm going to be doing a black, a black armor with green highlights to kind of give it this so, such a dark green that comes off as black appearance. Cause I really like that. Cause, um, cause it kind of feels, cause everyone, cause some descriptions and fluff say that he's got a hint of green to his armor or there's a peak of green in his green armor, in, on his armor. So I'm thinking it's one of those old, really blackish greens. And I think that kind of works better for him than, cause if I just paint him dark angel green, then he's just gonna look like a dark angel with some fancy stuff on him. And I want him to stick out. I want him to look like a menacing figure because, um, as most of the YouTube channels go, I feel that he's um, a villain. So we're going to be using, taking our Abaddon Black here and coloring all the areas that are um, that um, are going to be black, his armor, and getting into the crevices where the um, airbrush didn't um, make contact. So we're going to start with that and going to water down this black a little bit. And then we're going to proceed. So first I'm going to Clean up those little holes in there. Blacken that up a bit. What I like about the um, Model Air black is, let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Um, what I like about the um, Vallejo Model Air black is the fact that, um, as you can see, it's a very off color black. So. 
there's less of an issue with um, there's less issue with seeing what was pa what what I painted and is finished. So I can go here and go, oh, you know, I could obviously tell that the armor has been painted black, and if I wanted to paint the robe, I now know that the robe still needs to be um, painted black, if I was going to be doing that. So, just, I'm just dipping the tip of my black into some water. That way, kind of thins it out a bit, because I don't want to put too many... I don't want to put on too thick, because it already has a coating of paint on it. Which, like I said, was used to just base to prime it. Since it is very cold out right now, um, average temperature for me right now, for over here, is like 31, 32 degrees. So not ideal for spray painting, which is why I picked up the airbrush. Because I can, um paint all year long in spray paint. Essentially, I can base coat any model that needs to be um, base coated. And um, also, in case, I just want to encourage you guys to ask questions on the, um, on the, down in the comments section. Um, I will just note that a lot of these videos are going to be pre-recorded, so Let's just say if you, so I may record the entire thing in one go and then um, work on it later. So if you notice, like if you have a question and you go like, you know, hey vet, why'd you do this? And I don't respond in the next video. It's not because I'm not reading the comments. It's because these videos were, paid, were played um, after the fact, which what I might do is, what I may do is at the end of every video, um, at least what I'll probably do is I'll probably begin my next video series, my next um, paint project, answering any questions you may have on the, um, in a sort of like introduction type of thing. So, like I said, feel free to ask questions, go, oh, why'd you do this instead of that, or how'd you do this? And it's just that you're gonna have to bear with me and that it may take three or four weeks, maybe even, um, five, depending on the project before I could answer that question. Because, um, get very little time to actually record these videos um, myself, primarily because of just work and such, especially during the holidays. Um, so I want to record as much as possible in one go. That way then I can just um, set these all up, get them ready and prepped and go without having to worry about it. Oh, I'm sorry. He's been off camera this whole time. Oops. I'm gonna get into the um, folds of that hood. And now I'm gonna go over all of the chains and such on this guy because kind of like the black to be a little bit and his belt buckle want to get that in there and another benefit of watering down your paints is also you don't see the brush strokes as um, as as um, easily so it gives it gives more of the illusion that um it wasn't painted on that this is just an act, just a model and kind of like captures a more realistic look with it okay so we're almost done with um cipher here Good. A little, a little too thin. Let me thicken that up a little bit. This, oh, also, with that, like I said, um, let's just say you guys don't like the camera angle that I'm at, or you're saying, oh, it's too far away type of thing. I may not, like I said, because these are mostly pre-recorded, may not be able to do any type of corrections until my next video project. 
until my next paint project. So, uh, again, just want to say, you know, it's not me ignoring comments. It's not us um, just brushing them off. It's we're taking them into account. It's just that a lot of these episodes will be recorded and we won't be able to um, do anything about the um, issues until our next projects. Okay, and it looks like, Cypher, as you can tell here, see the difference between the Vallejo um, color, which is the robe, and the Abaddon black, which is why I really like this color for a um, primer, because you can easily tell what you painted and what you haven't. And so, I'm going to just put this down right here, and I forgot I didn't make a timer for myself, so I'm just going to pause for two seconds. All right, and we're back. Just got myself a little timer so I can keep track of these um, videos because I don't want them to go too long because then they take forever to load, they take forever to upload, and just a whole big bunch of nothing. So that's why we're going to be keeping them to a 30-minute um, um, timeline. That way it's easy enough. It's not too long, not too short. It's, about, it's as long as our touching base episodes. And those are easy for us to fix, um, to upload and such. So just fixing up some little dabby touch-ups here that I noticed, because like with most Peter models, they always find a way to magically chip even when you're not touching them. That's one thing that I like fine cast with. I've yet to have a fine cast model chip on me. Um, but Peter models tend to, as you can see, like, right there. It's chipped from me holding this model and such. And I even wash this, which is very rare. I very rarely, um, do that. And that's one thing I think that, um, I'll be benefiting from these videos is I'll be start, I'll start to practice better, um, hobby habits. Um, that a lot of the times I'll preach to people, um, but I won't actually do myself. So we're going to now paint the rest of his armor that's supposed to be black. And I'll make his gloves brown. But I always found it weird. His gloves, they always paint the um, his hands as if they're gloves. But if you look real closely, I'm going to see if I can zoom in and fix the focal point here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, but if you can tell, I don't know if you can really see it too well, but his gloves have rivets on them. So it looks like they're supposed to be powered armored, but they always talk about them having gloves on. Then again, I guess they could just be, you could write them off as studs. Um, so he could have studded gl um, gloves. It just looks weird, in my opinion. But, that's what it is. Now, fun thing, fun little fact, um, for me at least, um, if you... Throughout these projects, you'll probably notice one thing that is I only use, tend to use only one brand of paint depending on the project. Like most, like any War Machine models that I paint only really use um, Privateer Press paints and Cote d'Arms paints because it seems like Cote d'Arms is the manufacturer of the Privateer Press. Um, paint line, and for my GW stuff, I mainly just use, um, GW paint, and I guess just for some, I just find the colors match well with the models, and I don't use a lot of third party, um, paints, mainly because, um, I've used GW, I use what I use for so often, so long, and 
I never get, I never have good luck with blending the two different brands together. So to avoid all that, I just stick to the same paint brands and just stay with it. And so if I decided, oh, you know, let's just say, you know, if I do Infinity and I decide that I'm going to use Vallejo paints for Infinity, then I'll just stick with Vallejo the entire time and not change just because I don't want to deal with different paints and different mixtures and all that other jazz and just for me less complicated. Okay, now his other arm. And so what I'm doing here also with the paint is every so often I am dabbing a little bit of water and then every so often again I'm dabbing a little bit more paint that way my my um my paint never gets too thick but never is too watery to the point where I'm just like washing it in slightly pigmented water so it's like a very got to just keep the balance throughout the whole project and it's one of these like little touch and goes so like I just I use my palette as a um as a guide to um, what I'm doing. That way I can um that way I'm not using that way I'm not experimenting with the model and accidentally ruin the model because I made a mistake. Another and one thing with um with um mixed um with watered down paints is it may require you to do one or two layers in order to get um good coverage. Okay. That's that. And we're going to move on to the backpack. Okay, so there we go, and now on to the sword. Now, there's always, this is the one big um, thing. Is it lo the lion sword or is it Luthor's sword? Um, I like to think that it's Luthor's sword, mainly because from the fluff, it seems to be more. Um, it seems to be makes more sense to me because. Um, the fluff states that um, Lionel Johnson, that when Luther was found, um, the lion was gone, and Luther said the Watchers in the Dark came and took him away. And I would feel that the Watchers in the Dark would not have let the lion's sword be stolen, and so I feel that they took um, his sword with with them 
because, I mean, they have the lion's helm, which was supposedly, which is the um, Johnson's helmet. So it seems odd that they would take the helmet and not, and not bring, keep the sword with them. And, but it, I feel it makes more, s that Luthor, though, in his crazed state, would not have noticed someone taking his weapon away from him. In fact, he may have even, because of um, his mental breakdown, may have felt that he didn't deserve to wield it. And so I, so I make, think it's more plausible that Cypher would have had gotten Luthor's sword instead of um, the Lion's sword. And plus, the fact that it grants um, a bunch of stealth and like shroud um, abilities makes me feel more like that seems that seems more like a power, a blessing of like a darkness type of ability. So I think that what Cypher has on his back is Luthor's sword. So I'm going to try and paint this up very generic to kind of keep it in theme because you would figure that a sword that was wielded by the lion would look very um, decorative or, you know, very much this is a sort of a primark or primarch, however you wish to pronounce it. Um, but then again, the lion did have an extensive sword collection. So it is possible that it is one of many swords that he um, had, and he, with his knightis, with his knight, knightish um, upbringing, it wouldn't be too far gone to see that he um, would be less um, less show um, showy about his weaponry because it doesn't matter how pretty it looks as long as it's effective. Seems to be his mental with a lot of stuff. Like in um, one story, they were discussing how the lion, the, um, every strike the lion made was, preci was precise and meant to kill. Nothing was there to just show off his battle prowess or his skills as swordsman. Every strike was made to kill. So it seems like the lion was less braggy with his sword play. Alrighty, so now we have that done. And we're going to basically um, go on to the next part, which for this is going to be a green wash on all of his um, armor plating. Then we're going to take a step back from that and continue with um, the rest of the model's paint up job. So we're going to first take our shade, which uh, for this shade I'm going to be using um, Beal Tan Green. Give it a nice good shake, as all the GW tutorials always say. They always go, give it a nice good shake. And then take some of the paint. Not too thick. I don't want those down, I just let some of the excess go on a palette, and then I'm going to go over all of his black armor in this shade.
Okay. So just a little bit there. And in case anyone's wondering, I'm watching one of the Star Trek shows. Um, very big into listening to something while I work because I help. I feel it helps me helps distract me and gives me um, just some background noise to listen to. So I'm not just sitting in a very quiet, cold room listening to nothing but the sound of my breathing, which in these brief moments of n not saying anything, you could probably guess is very, very boring. And so we go here, it's a little thick with this, but it's all right, it's a wash. Um, like I said, we want to try and get like a deep green look with this anyway. And the trick with a wash shade is trying to get it where it doesn't pool, um, doesn't really pool up because then you get inconsistencies and then you get parts that look really nice and then you get parts that were really thickly coated and then stuff that's thinly coated and it just doesn't look right at all. Okay, and then we go on to his other arm. And so I guess one question that I guess uh, most people would be wondering, and it fits with the theme of painting up Cypher here. Again, I am sorry that I keep shifting over. It's, it's a force of habit. Again, not very, not really used to painting um, on camera. I used to do it for a while on my old channel, but then it was always a really crummy, um, it was always a crummy, um, angle. I was never happy with it, and it was something that I've always played with, and again, and the other difference is, is on my old channel, I had a, um, smaller camera, so I could, like, fit it right, um, in between, right in the center between my paint project and, um, my hands, and my hands wouldn't get in the way. And in some of the videos, they actually do get in the way. I'm going to just wet that a bit. Not too much, and don't mind my dad talking. Um, like me, um, if you ever notice in the um, Touching Base episodes, I have a very loud voice. And that's where I get it from. Also, the fact that um, I used to do a lot of play productions in school I not a, um, most of us most of the play productions didn't give mics to um, the cast so we had to learn to project so I speak very loudly also I'm the third child and I was there was quite a big age gap between me and my siblings so I end up talking really loud in hopes that you'll be heard because very tiny person in a room full of adults. So, I got all the green that is going to be um, green washed. And with that, I'm going to end the video here because it looks like I may be out of time after that super long monologue and the introduction. So, that is all for right now. Until next time, fearless gamers, take care.